Uh, we're here at the Internet and Politics Conference at the Berkman Center for Internet Society at Harvard University, and I'm speaking to Dana Fisher from Columbia University. Thanks for talking with us, Dana. No problem, Dan. Um, I, I was curious what your perspective uh, was on um, the role of the Internet in uh, the campaign this year. It, 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 has it fundamentally changed the way campaigns run? Is it fundamentally, fundamentally different from uh, anything else that's ever happened in history? There's no question that the Internet has made people be able to get involved with much less activation energy. And basically what that means is that anybody in their homes can get involved in the campaign. It doesn't matter where they live and it doesn't matter if there's an office nearby. So it has changed politics in that way. It's made it much more local in some ways, but at the same time it's also centralized politics because you can connect with the campaign directly, not have to go through intermediary sites of you know local or... Um, regional offices. So if you're saying that um, the, the real change has been in ease of access, ease of use, perhaps, if that's uh, one of the major changes or the major change, um, what are we seeing in 10 years? Is it, is it going to be uh, people can vote from home? Uh, uh, can, they, can everybody run? Are we going to be doing everything by plebiscite? Well, I have to say that I, I think also that resources have become much more diffuse, but I still believe that the political structure of the United States won't change. So we will continue to have um, an electoral system that is based to some degree on you know, congressional districts, et cetera, and so forth. So people are still going to be locally grounded, as much as I think a lot of people who come from the Internet perspective tend to think that uh, location matters less. I think it continues to matter very significantly, and it will... I predict for the next 10 years. Uh, uh, for the next 10 years. So, so what, uh, it, are, we, are we looking at trying to mold the internet to the way, uh, you know, uh, politics work or how, uh, what, uh, and people view the internet as, as a free, you know, floating ethereal being that has a life of its own. Like, are we trying to constrain it within the constraints of our politics? Well, I think that's one perspective. My perspective would be that the internet has to become a resource for people at at the real level in politics in, in the United States. And politics are local and politics are based on congressional districts and they're based on moving up through to Senate seat and into the presidential office. So I think that that's going to continue. I, I, I mean, will that have an effect on the way the internet works? I don't think so, but it will have an effect on the ways that people mobilize to be involved in politics through the internet. So it, um, it there's a perspective that it's, that it's more than just mobilization around a candidate. It's, a, it's around issues. It's around, um, you know, what comes after the election. Um, so the, the conversations going on right now uh, with the Obama campaign and what are they going to do uh, through change.gov and uh, it, what, what, what do you feel should be the direction that they choose? I think they need to understand that when the target changes, as it has now that the candidate has become elected, they need to change as well. And I know that they're thinking about that, but I think they need to be reflexive and recognize that for them to have an effect politically now, they need to focus on the issues at hand. And everybody who gets involved in the, or got involved in the Obama campaign is not going to be interested in campaign finance reform. Everybody's not going to be interested in the bailout. Everybody's not going to be interested in climate change. But there are people who will have those as their voting issues and be willing to take the time to get involved in those issues. Well, what they need to do is create an umbrella under which people who have issues that are important to them can be involved in politics. Because if they try to just expect anybody who got involved with the campaign to be interested in anything that Obama's doing on a certain day, it's not going to work. There was talk for a little while that uh, the, the Obama supporters, the, all the people who were involved in the network, uh, should be, uh, you know, brought over to other Democrat Democratic, uh, you know, candidates and things like that. Is that? Is, it sounds like you don't think that that necessarily is the best way to go. Well, I think that plugging people into the next step and the next the next election, which in most cases is going to be the midterm election, that's feasible. But you can't just drop everything for the next two years and then resume at the midterm election time. So people who are engaged need to have sustained engagement. If they don't have sustained engagement, they'll find other things to do with their time. Like what? Bowling. <laughs> We are at Harvard, so I said bowling. I mean, they, they could do, they could have life. I mean, a lot of people who get involved in all types of movements do it instead of doing other things, taking time with their kids, playing bridge, bowling, whatever it is that they could do. And in this case, I think that um, many of the people have chosen to work for the campaign and be involved in the campaign over other things in their lives, and they have to be given a compelling reason to continue doing that. So I, I shouldn't pick up the Dungeons & Dragons uh, habit yet again. 
I should wait and see what, uh, what other opportunities there might be for me. Not yet, but maybe sometime in the near future. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you, Dan. Take care.